underneath Alex Morgan. Yeah, Al look for Marta to help create chances for other people. She is the number one in the league in creations for herself. She'll be looking to play Alex Morgan in, who found herself in better scoring positions last game against KC. Well, there were some clouds threatening around Chicago. A lot of rain last night, but look at that beautiful blue sky. It is warm, 85 degrees, so we will have hydration breaks in our game today. First half and second half, we'll have those breaks, as you see our referee, Farad Dodko, in the center circle today. This is the second meeting between these two teams. It was a 1-0 win for Chicago down in Orlando earlier this season, a game that the Red Stars will tell you they feel very fortunate to have escaped with the win. Now Alex Morgan making her third straight start and seeming like she's really starting to get up to speed after coming back from injury and joining the team late after her time with Leon. Marta has just been on fire since she's joined the Orlando team this season. Eight goals, four assists. Always a ton of fun to watch. The Chicago team has been excellent here at Toyota Park. Wearing the white tops and red shorts. Orlando across the field, all in purple. And trying to make their way up those standings. Chicago sitting in second place, just behind first place, North Carolina. Huerta gets it over to DiBernardo. Chicago trying to strike early. Eleven players in this game will be competing in the Tournament of Nations coming up in the FIFA International break, including Alana Kennedy, who you just saw for Orlando. She'll be playing for native Australia. Tom Sermani, the head coach for the Orlando Pride second season and former head coach of both the U.S. Women's National Team and the Australian National Team. Rory Dames has been here with the Chicago Red Stars from the beginning, fifth year in NWSL, seventh year overall, as he also coached this team in WPSL and then WPSL Elite. Both of these coaches known for their work in player development. Rory especially working with a lot of the youth players around the Chicago area, working the Eclipse Select club team. Tony Presley will get it up to Catley. Morgan managing to keep it in. I'm really interested to see how this reconfigured back line for Chicago works. Okay, we've got Taylor Camo in the right back spot. No Sam Johnson, who had to come out of last week's game. Possible concussion symptoms. Cross from Morgan. Absolutely nobody home, though, on the far side of the field. Well, the one thing that this team is built on is defense. They've been built on organization, and every single person knows their responsibilities, regardless of what position, if they're left outside back, like Casey Short, traditionally where we see her line up, and now she's central back. They all know exactly where to go. Aaron Gilliland switching over to that outside left back spot after we're used to seeing her on the right. This ball sent into the area. Short is there! not intentionally directed back to Alyssa Nair, so no penalty there, but a scary moment nonetheless. All right, it's been Orlando with trying to find that seam to U.S. Soccer. It would be 
and they pulled Camille all the way back, Huerta to try to prevent service to her, but they're still, Lionel's <laughs> still able to create on this side despite one of the best players in the world playing central in Marta. See what they can do in this corner kick opportunity. Be Camilla to take it. Nair looking at it, punches it away as Morgan was right in front of her. Short reading that ball in the air. Allie Krieger now will play it back. Marta trying to get around Huerta. Uses that left foot to slice it in. Orlando on the front foot to start this match. Morgan working it back to Marta. A little step over. The shot from the Brazilian. No, perhaps looking for a cross to that far post. It's been Orlando all the first five minutes of this game. We see Alyssa Nair coming out with the butt punch, clears it out of danger, has an excellent punch, allows for defenders to get in behind the ball and challenge for that second one. Right now, with all the shifts that Chicago has had to make, we see Huerta playing right outside mid. You wonder if that is affecting the way in which they defend. They're too central right now, creating too many pockets of space for someone as talented as all this Orlando flank side is to create. Shot taken there after the quick transition up the field. That was Hoy. Well, Hoy getting the start. You can see Kennedy and Hoy going at it. High foot from Kennedy. Needs to be careful. And Hoy getting the start up top. You're going to watch her to sit on Presley to engage Presley a bit and then hoping that'll create a pocket of space in between Krieger and Presley for Kristen Price Press to operate in. Yeah, Press and Huerta have, have, have had such a great partnership up top. You wonder how long Rory Dames will stick with this alignment or if and when he might switch and, and move Sofia Huerta back up with Press. But we'll see if that pocket of space you're talking about does indeed open up either for Press or on the outside for Huerta. Ball sent ahead. Spencer won't be able to get to it. Erin Gilliland has neon paint on her face. Talented player out of the University of Kentucky. Member of the best 11 a year ago in the NWSL. Very tough, very active defender getting up and down the line for Chicago. Marta and Morgan, boy, those two looking good together in the early going. Kennedy keeps possession for the pride. Now a turnover. Chicago will try to move it up the field. Tony Presley showed off that rocket of a left foot with her first career NWSL goal last week and the biggest win in Orlando's history, 4-1 over FC Kansas City. Catley crossing. It misses a couple of Orlando players. Morgan took the first shot at it. Couldn't quite stretch out enough. Now Gilliland pushing the tempo, getting it to press. Huerta. DiBernardo. Comes to her aid. Camo sets up Di Bernardo, takes the shot, and it's wide. 
Orlando with the be bevy of chances here coming in from out wide. Alex Morgan almost gets on the end of it. And you get to see Marta react to that service. It was beautiful in between the center backs of the Red Stars and Alex Morgan didn't get her timing right. But for the Red Stars, their back line is all out of sorts. You got Camo on the right, Gilliland is now on the far left. And when you go from playing on the right side to a left side as a defender, that messes up all the angles you're used to playing and how you see the game and how you man mark. And right now, I think we're seeing a little bit of the growing pains of this back line trying to figure out how to work together. As a reminder, this back line for Chicago without Sam Johnson, tremendously talented center back who has started every match up until this point. And also Julie Ertz, a stalwart defensively, whether she's on the back line or in the midfield where she's been for the most part of this season. She's been sick this week, is available, Rory Dames telling us, but not sure how many minutes he'd be able to get out of her. Morgan looking for Spencer. The ball stops nicely in front of Spencer, who's bumped down. No whistle. There is a foul, so be a free kick coming for the Red Stars. Our NWSL game of the week from Toyota Park in Bridgeview, Illinois. Jen Hildreth, Kate Mark Graf, Dallin Cuff. Glad to have you here with us on what has turned into a beautiful day just outside Chicago. It's Red Stars team trying to get up into that top spot. Three points today could put them there, at least pending results later tonight. Gilliland trying to stay and does. Sends the cross in, Huerta diving header. Not enough on it as Bledsoe makes the save. Gillen coming down left. This is where Chicago gets most of their width because their midfielders pinch in. It's responsible for the outside backs. Huerta made the right call, just didn't get a head on it like she wanted to, was courageous, got down low for the diving header. Catley gets a touch on of it and Bledsoe able to clean up. So now we've seen both keepers had to make quick reaction grabs after defenders unable to clear the ball. Marta. Play it back. Camilla only recently moved to that right back spot for Orlando. We expect to see number nine get up in the attack plenty as she is here. Tried to take the shot. Possession heavily in favor of Orlando through the first minute, 70%. And they're keeping the pressure on here. Chicago having a difficult time getting it out of this end. Danny Weatherholt finding Marta. Marta on the move again, gets it back. Trying to work around Camo. And we'll see the call of the referee. Will indeed be the second corner of the match for Orlando. I like Marta holding into the midfield because she can pick and choose what pockets of space she wants to operate in. And she's good under pressure. She's even better when she gets to decide what space that she wants around her freed up. And then she can decide to go down to her preferred left foot, get a cross in. But she does so under pressure and delivers with such crisp technique under pressure. Makes it easy for everyone to get in good scoring positions. Camilla will take the corner again for the pride. More driven this time. Catley. And Kubogagu most likely offside had she even attempted Long serve. And Press giving a thumbs up to her goalkeeper. Oh, 
Savoy. Lauren Kasky making her first start. Not quite sure if that was a set of pass. Maybe it was going to be a shot. <laughs> I think that was a bending ball away from the defender to Kristen Kresses. Oh, if only things always play around the field the way they in your head. First. And they got a goal from Chris.
Morgan. Gets it back to Abogagu, leading ball. Good defending from Como. Just three players other than goalkeeper Alyssa Nair on this Chicago Red Stars team playing the same position they started the last match in. And I think you're right, Kate. I think we're seeing that there is a bit of an adjustment period out there as they're figuring where everybody is on the field. Well, they're disjointed, but more than anything, what's setting them up for failure is how they're lining up to defend. The back line's dropping off so much. They're creating this pocket of space in between the back line and the midfield of Colaprico that when they do win it back, there's no, but there's no outlet to go to. I imagine Coach Rory Dames will be out there trying to figure it out, trying to sort it out and direct his players. Weatherholt, ton of space. That pocket you were just talking about available for Orlando. They took it. Marta. It's around Di Bernardo. Still with it, Marta. You soft, Danny! And now you hear Rory Dames. Did you hear that? Too soft, Danny. Cole Preco needs to be harder in the tackle against Marta. On the top of the box. Orlando just consistently down here in this attacking third so far in this match. Kennedy keeping it on her foot maybe a bit too long that time. Hoy trying to turn. Looking for press on the far side. Bledsoe came out for it. Blocked it. She hustles back to the goal. Oh. And then Hoy, the giveaway to Krieger after all that buildup. Weatherholt. On it again. And Orlando find a way to execute in this final third. Marta still doesn't see an option she wants to go to. Four defenders converge around her, and it's Huerta who eventually takes it away. Press working from the right side now. Quick cross. Couldn't find its intended target. Hoy. Back line now nearly up to midfield for Chicago as Spencer will get it out. Camilla. Orlando team has never beaten Chicago. The Red Stars 3-0 all time. And all three of those matches, one nothing decision. So not only has Orlando never beat Chicago, they've never scored against them. But they have certainly had the majority of the ball so far in this one. Red Bled show, excuse me, in goal for the ninth straight match for Orlando, starting in place of Ashlyn Harris. Still recovering from that quadriceps injury. Bledsoe's done a terrific job. See the last match for 
all the NWSL teams before the next international break. Of course, you still have a chance to see many of our players in action. Tournament of Nations going on. United States, Brazil, Australia, Japan, all of those matches you can see in the ESPN family of networks. And as we mentioned before, 11 players in this match will feature in that one, including Kristen Press. Kennedy, who's moved up into the midfield for Orlando. Tom Sermani loves her there. Catley trying to work it to Obogagu. Nair comes out. It wasn't going to get to her in time for her to use her hand. So she goes down, uses the feet. I love that decision by Nair. Naughton is caught too high up, realizing that Ob she wasn't going to get back to Obogagu. And so Nair comes out hard. We have two goalkeepers that have been excellent thus far this first half, having to come high up their lines to prevent more dangerous chances from opening up. Come on, Bledsoe almost scored a goal the last time these <laughs> two met. You know. much coming from that corner as has been the case so far you see Julie Ertz who Rory Dames told us was really struggling this week just wasn't feeling well right but now, yeah right now the Red Stars are missing her defensive pressure in that midfield there's too much time and space for the playmakers Orlando to decide what they want to do and if they're able to get her back on the field perhaps in the second half I don't think Orlando's gonna have such an easy time transitioning from defense to offense. So you almost feel like now is the time if Orlando is going to try to strike here because with the personnel aligned the way they are in the field, they have the advantage at least so far in terms of maintaining possession and kind of doing what they want to do in the middle of the field. And every time I've seen the Red Stars at home, I always feel like they're better in the second half. They just seem a little bit quicker than the other team. They're the home field advantage comes into play a little bit more extra motivation that happens when you're playing in front of family and friends comes into play. So Orlando will need to capitalize on one of these chances to get themselves the best position to be able to face a strong Red Star side in the second half. Yeah, Chicago unbeaten at home this season, 5-0 and 2, and happy to be back in Toyota Park after their last four in a row have been on the road. Nice move from Abogagu to get it to Catley. She'll loft it out of bounds. This is just the first of five NWSL games going on today. Tonight, be sure to tune in. You've got Houston and Boston. Those two teams, both on unbeaten streaks, trying to move their way up. Kansas City, North Carolina. That game got pushed back due to extreme heat in Kansas City. Of course, North Carolina, the top team in the league. Seattle Sky Blue FC looking forward to that matchup. It was a 1-1 draw earlier this season. You've got the top two goal scorers in the league and Sam Kerr, Megan Rapino, and Portland and Washington also at 10 Eastern. Press with a great touch to settle it. Press with the goal!
the pocket of Ali Krieger and Camilla. But you know what it is? It's the touch away from Krieger. It cuts off her body. Krieger's unable to defend her. Bledsoe comes out too quick, too hard. And so is experienced and as quick and technical on the ball as Kristen Press uses the momentum of Bledsoe against herself. It's an easy finish, but really, it was the ball was sublime, but the touch from Kristen Press to block Krieger off was just impressive. Abogadu looking for a quick answer. Spencer as Gilliland goes to the ground. And as much as the ball as Orlando has had, I was going to say, when Chicago has found Kristen Press in those brief moments of time, they've been dangerous, no more so than that goal. Seventh goal of the season for Press, 29th minute. What I like was the recognition from Huerta to realize that there was space in behind the back line of the Pride, and with that, be able to hit a one-time ball. She anticipated she was going to get it and already knew where she was going to go with it. I think she's learning how to play outside mid right now defensively and struggling a bit against a very talented side. But that ball right there shows what she's capable of in the attack. Two of those other one nothing victories for Chicago over Orlando. Kristen Press had the goal. She has one today and we'll take a break as a hydration break is on the field in Chicago. Kristen Press's goal, the difference so far, Sofia Huerta setting her up in the 29th minute. Those two have connected more so than any other duo in the NWSL this season. Press has assisted Huerta twice. Huerta has now assisted Press three times, with this being the most recent. Uh, just beautiful ball from Huerta in behind the back line. Krieger doesn't see Press on her back shoulder, but really, it's all about that first touch from Press. That is so incredibly difficult to do at the angle to do that touch, block Krieger from making a defensive play and beating Bloodsoak. So now Chicago with the lead, and moments ago, Dallin Cuff was listening in to Rory Dames' huddle. Dallin? Yeah, thanks, Jen. Despite being up 1-0, he was very animated in his huddle. Started really talking to the back line, all about positioning, tracking runners, finding the, finding the way to pick up the space right now that Orlando's exposing right now, particularly where Marta is, very animated with the back line. Then Kristen Press said, we heard in the feature earlier when she said that she can't be satisfied. She's never satisfied. When she said, Rory, I'm terrible. Any advice? She just scored a goal, a beautiful goal at that, but she wants to know what to do. He then talked to her about her position, where to pull. The key thing he did say is, in 60-minute mark, this thing's going to open up, and there'll be many more opportunities for you. Just keep digging hard. Thank you, Down. Lots of good stuff there. Rory mentioned that 60th minute in our conversation yesterday said he felt that's when the game really opened up the last time these two teams met. Things got stretched. There's Huerta on the ball again, sends it toward the goal herself, and Bledsoe grabs it. What would be incredible to see is if someone from the Red Stars gets in line. Right now, all the services are short and at least 30 to 25 yards out. That makes it really easy as a back line to defend that cross. And it's immediately transition to the other side. Abogagu. Moving forward. Touch got away from her a little bit. She gets it back. Morgan scored her first goal last week from the penalty spot. And Marta was in an offside position, knew it as soon as she came toward the ball. From that position right there, that ball, minute is served, she is offside, she's recovering, and she's also a bit annoyed at Weatherhall for playing that ball. Right now it's too quick from Orlando. The minute they get the ball and they got some space, they think they need to go. They benefit from passing it around a little bit. And I would love to see Camilla actually get in the final third. If the Red Stars are going to give Orlando space to shoot from distance, there's nobody better you want shooting than your right back Camilla, who we've seen score a goal from distance and so far in this league. Camilla getting up on cue as she connects with Marta, sends it into the box where it's headed by Morgan. Point blank save by Nair. 
I, I think she heard me talking about Camilla's <laughs> presence. A little give and go with Marta into that space. But look at the patience. She sets it up for Morgan to get her run. She could have hit that one touch earlier. She doesn't. But I love that it's bending away. And all Morgan has to do is redirect it. But look at the presence of Nair. Doesn't go out fishing for it. Doesn't get over eager. Just keeps her ground. Ball goes right to her. She gets out of danger. Not out of danger now, though. Did you really just give me a high five in the booth? Because I, I, totally I was talking did. about Camilla's I, importance. I mean, can you just predict something else to happen, Kate? Because that was literally on cue as you were speaking about it. I did. I, I did high five Kate in the booth for that. It was a bit <laughs> awkward. I'm not going to lie. I feel bad for our staff. Thanks for not leaving me hanging, though. Appreciate that. <laughs> Bledsoe has earned save of the week honors three times for Orlando. I think we just saw a candidate for this week from Melissa Nair. She's been among the best in this league, especially this season. She and the Red Stars. Do you know what I love? The breakdown. Yeah. Do you know what I love about her though is that she's not flashy. She doesn't make a save more than it needs to be. She holds her ground. Some keepers right there, you would have seen that, and they would have done a full high dive for a shot that was just right at their head. And I just love that her ability, she makes the big saves when she needs to. She's good, she's competent, but then she's also just solid, doesn't need to be flashy for the attention, just gets the job done. Five shutouts on the season for Nair and Chicago. Ball, miss hit by Kasky. I have to imagine we'll see a Mots come in in midfield, her 100th cap if she does come in mm -hmm. for the Red Stars. But coming for that midfield, she knows what to do. Kasky's done a good job, but it may put Horta in a different position. It just put a little bit different player in that midfield to try to shut down this Orlando team that is dominating in that midfield third. Coming up at halftime, Dallin and Kay will have a preview of the Tournament of Nations, which we've been talking about. Should be some great international soccer there to keep an eye on. Bad touch by Nair. Morgan trying to make her pay for it. She recovers back to the goal. And after a humongous save, a rare error back there, that luckily for Nair and the Red Stars didn't result in a goal. Good touch out from Abogagu to get it to Catley. How many times do you see in this league, Kate, that defensive mistakes often get punished? And the players are just too good. They are. They are too good. But you know what? Alyssa Nair did a good job of recovering after that. That was a poor touch, but she's able to get onto it. Didn't celebrate her mistake, but instead got back to business. You get to see a little bit. A back pass, a bad touch by Naughton, not able to clear it out from Nair, but Nair goes immediately and jumps on it. That wasn't the right call at all to initially try to do that one touch pass, and Naughton not, didn't have the angle. And Morgan did just enough with her presence to distract Nair from hitting a quality ball out. Sometimes it's okay just to launch it out. She knows that, but she was able to recover. And that zero still on the scoreboard for the Chicago defense. It's been hard to break down this season. Just 13 goals allowed by the Chicago team. That's tied for second in the league. Huerta's pass picked off. Kennedy headed away by Short. Quick restart by Orlando. Mm, 
Marta. Seeing some space. She can hit it from distance, but that one is saved by Nair. A little wince on the face of Marta after that shot. I can never tell if she's limping or if she's ruminating over her mistake because she's so <laughs> expressive. She is. Hoy trying to get onto that ball from Press. Catches up to it, but nobody following her up. Huerta was on her way there, but not quite in time. cross will eventually trickle back to Gilliland Kasky couldn't hang on to it but Gilliland comes away with it she'll send in a beauty Puerta and Bledsoe quickly looking the other way both of these goalkeepers will jump start their attack if they see the opportunity. Morgan. Thinking someone would be there in that space who is not. Now just a little too quick to release that ball, not realizing that Spencer had cut over and was more central. But at the same time, if she's going to play that 9 and 10 role and she has time and space to turn, it is setting up other players or creating that chance yourself, not just dishing it away the first chance you get it. That's some area that after injury, that is usually the last to come back. It's that recognition, OK, now it's time to go, and then the confidence to do it. Krieger has to hustle back to recollect the ball after the first touch let her down. It's a tough ball in her defense. does well to get it to Di Bernardo, but then it's given right back to the pride, Krieger. Three minutes of stoppage time added on to this first half. You'll always get a minimum of three when we do have those hydration breaks. about Camilla, Kate. Any other changes that you would like to see for Orlando to make a little more of a lot of the possession that they've had that just hasn't amounted to much this first half? I'd like to see Camilla in for Weatherhull in that midfield position because she's able to shoot from distance, but she's also able to create and be patient to bring other players in the attack. You see Marta trying to go in different places across the field, mostly central. Now she's wide right, but she needs a little bit of help from somebody that can read the game a bit better to figure out and to pick and choose their moments. Bogagu, quick touch off the throw in, but up and over the crossbar. You get the feeling it's been a frustrating first half for number 10. We saw her like that two weeks ago, frustrated with her teammates against the Washington Spirit, and then she went on to have quite the game. Scored both the goals for Orlando in that one, which would finish as a 2-2 draw. Mallory Pugh scoring the two for Washington. Marta and Alex Morgan teamed up to win a championship together with the Western New York Flash and WPS. And they're teaming up again on this play here. Marta trying to find an opening. Naughton and Short doing a good job defensively, and Marta will quickly collect it and bring it over to the corner. Who 
Bogagu. Marta kicking the ground in disgust after the play. Yeah, rightfully so. A Bogagu should hold on to that ball, but also takes some communication from Marta. Be like, just hold it. Bogagu holding press and the whistle sounds as a result. Just a little bit of a professional foul from a Bogagu. Sometimes they throw a card for this the minute you pull somebody's shirt, but there were players in behind her. Doesn't want Press to immediately go in transition. Nice little footwork from Kristen Press at Bogagu. Trying to slow down the attack. So far, the referees let a lot go on both sides. And I'm happy he didn't give a card for that, but if she has another foul, card is warranted. makes a difference there in your mind had press been further advanced on the field or not as many players between her and the goal correct and then right if there's more numbers behind you defensively that's not as egregious of a foul it's not as bad the higher up in the field not as bad had she been in the defensive third that's a bad foul and that's card worthy and a free kick in a dangerous spot there is the first half whistle so Kristen press the difference maker so far, she was dangerous anytime she had a chance to touch the ball. And in the 29th minute, connected from Sofia Huerta for the game's only goal so far. And you think Rory Dames happy his team with a one goal lead. Let's find out what he has to say. He's with Dallin. Thanks, Jen. Rory, just obviously talking to the official right there. What are you upset about? Well, not sure how that's not a yellow card. I was just asking if Alex breaks loose in the second half and we pull her shirt and pull her back if it's not a card and it's just a free kick. So apparently that's an interpretation rule. Um, so. Not, not of the game itself. You guys are up one nothing, but Orlando's dominated possession, 60% possession, a lot in your half. You're playing with a reshuffled back line. How would you assess your first half performance from the defensive side? We got to do a better job of holding on to the ball. Um, they've pushed us into our end pretty far. Um, I think when we've gotten at their space, it's obviously extremely hot. But if we can't hold on to the ball a little bit more, we're not going to be able to defend for 45 minutes like that. Thanks, Coach. OK, thanks. And when we come back after this, it is uh, the international break coming up next week. We will preview the Tournament of Nations. Kate Margraf and I look at Jill Ellis's roster for the US team. Some of the surprises and what she thinks Jill's trying to do with these upcoming friendlies. We'll be back in a minute. And welcome back to Chicago. We're at halftime here. Beautiful day it's turned out to be between the Red Stars and the Orlando Pride. We are on the cusp, though, of an international break here coming up, the Tournament of Nations. The U.S. team will play three games here as with NWSL goes on break. Kate Margraf, Dallin Cuff here. And when you look at this roster that Jill Ellis announced, 22 of the 23 players are NWSL players. When you looked at the roster, what jumped off the page to you? What jumped off to me was this is the perfect mixture of potential of what this team could be in 2019 and giving those new players experience as well as experience with the solidified lineup of someone like Alyssa Nair, the number one goalkeeper since 2016. I imagine number two will be Jane Campbell. This would be a great opportunity for Nair to get some quality minutes against some top three competition. Abby Dahlkomper, another Collins, new to the roster. She'll be in some time center back. And then Taylor Smith, that's the one I want everyone to keep an eye on. Incredible speed going, covering back and going forward. And in the midfield, Midge Purse, Margaret, everyone calls her Midge. Harvard in the house. Called. Yeah, Harvard in the house. If you notice, it's all about the wide positions. That's an area that Jill Ellis wants to concentrate on, build that depth and versatility in the roster. And up top, Lim Williams comes back in. Alex Morgan gets a call back in, and Sydney LaRue, still coming back from pregnancy, gets another chance in. But watch Lindsey Horan, because that is one of the players that has had a phenomenal NWSL season. Sam Mewis as well. When you talk about the three players in the NWSL on the women's national team that are making a difference and are the critical focal points of their team, Sam Mewis comes to mind, playing well, feeding everyone up top, and also breaking up attacks on the defensive side. And Lindsay Horan usually plays a little bit deeper for the women's national team, but she's been so dominant up top, creating chances, not just for other people, but also for herself and dominant on set piece. I mean, look at that goal. I imagine her to play a little bit higher up, up in the forward line in this tournament. Hope we see more of that. Beautiful goal. That was a goal of the week and actually knotted it up in stoppage time down in Houston. Here are the 
games coming up for the U.S. team and all the teams. It's Brazil, Japan, and Australia, along with the U.S. Three straight games here on the 27th, the 30th, and the 3rd. It's going to be a fantastic break. All coverage, of course, on the ESPN family of networks. But we'll be back, folks. No worries. Here on Lifetime Game of the Week, August 5th, and no place better to be than Portland. The Rose City Riveters will be there. Lindsey Horan, maybe more of that, as we showed you before, as the Thorns look to continue to find their way atop the table in the Houston Dash. Carly Lloyd and crew, they're the hottest team in this league right now. Last five games, they pulled off 11 points. Nobody can say that right now. Great game coming back August 5th, 3.30 on Lifetime, Eastern Time, 12.30, West Coast Time. When we come back from break, though, it's back to this game. It's been a good one so far. Red Stars and the Pride. Don't go anywhere. Jen and Kate will break down the second the first half and look forward to the second half when we come back. Yeah, that was that comfortable. Was <clears throat> this broadcast is presented by authority of the National Women's Soccer League and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the National Women's Soccer League. It is halftime in Bridgeview, Illinois. Julie Ertz warming up. Expect to see her at some point in the second half. Her Red Stars leading Orlando one to nothing after the first 45 minutes. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf. Kate, we saw Orlando dominate in possession. They had more total shots, but they didn't come away with a goal. Why was Chicago better? Or at least why are they ahead after the first 45? Well, they took advantage of the one opportunity that was clear cut. And I have to say that Orlando has had chances. They just weren't able to execute. And when they missed those first couple chances, then they tried to just get a little bit impatient and tried to go too central. Too easy for this team to see. Yeah, eventually Chicago able to break through, but both teams had their goalkeepers have some big moments in the first half. Oh my gosh, look at this from Bledsoe. She's already off her line. She has to commit at this point and go for it. She was in no man's land and she gets a touch on it and the play is dead. And then this, the sequence that set up the goal. Huerta, a beautiful touch from Press. Now, Kristen Press loves to sit on the back shoulders of center backs. It's so difficult to defend, but really it's the weight of this ball. Huerta's recognition of space and behind, but this touch is world class. Gets Krieger out of position, then Bledsoe comes flying out, uses the momentum against her. Press just incredible, but Camilla grew into the game, which needs to happen if Orlando's gonna have a chance to get back in it. Buys time for Morgan to get in on it, but it's the footwork in there to be in the right place preemptively to make that save look easy on Alex Morgan. Point blank save there by Alyssa Nair to maintain the shutout in the first half. Chicago trying to hang on, take over first place in the league, but we've got another 45 minutes to go. Second half coming up. We're just about ready to start the second half. Before we do, Dallin Cuff standing by with Orlando head coach Tom Sermani. Coach, you're making a change right now. Kristen Edmonds is coming on for Jasmine Spencer. What do you think that's going to give you? Well, well hopefully we'll get a little bit more ball down the right-hand side and uh, just a, a little bit more injection of energy. Um, although Jazz, Jazz did well, we just feel that we could, um, we're could. we trying to exploit them on the, on, on the flanks, and we think uh, you know it might be set up for Kristen to do that. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good stuff, Dallin. So Kristen Edmonds, the one change made at the half for Orlando. Came off the bench in the last match against Kansas City. That big 4-1 win scored her first goal of the season not long after entering the match. So perhaps Sermani looking for a little magic there. And Julie Ertz, we saw warming up at halftime. She's come on for Chicago. See if Julie Ertz can settle down and keep the ball a bit more for Chicago, something Rory Dames talked to Dallin about at the half. But more importantly, be a shield in front of that back line of the Red Stars. Too much service was going into Alex Morgan, and also no one was then closing on both sides of Morgan. Like Cole Prigo wasn't stepping to Morgan, turning her back and putting pressure on it. Too easy to set play from the central high position. So one change made for each team as we start the second half. One nothing has been the scoreline, a very familiar one in this 
short series between these two teams. First three games, all one nothing decisions for the Red Stars. Kristen Press adding her third goal against Orlando in the 29th minute today. That stands as the only goal of the match so far. Marta working that left side, slipped up a little bit. She'll throw some turf as she gets back to her feet. But Orlando still with the ball here. Weather holds, laying it for Morgan just under her foot. Marta trying to create something centrally, but not afraid to go up front. The nice little through ball to her. So good with her agility, usually keeps her feet. Katie not in the center back for the Red Stars. It's a good job of being patient and not going in for a hard tackle. I love that when center backs don't go leaving their feet for a goal line challenge that sometimes can leave you open to earning the other team a foul in dangerous positions, making the forward beat you instead of making it easy or giving them a corner kick. That's well defended and patient defending by Katie Naughton. No, Rory Dames has been really pleased with the play of both of his two regular center backs this season, Katie Naughton, in her second year with the Red Stars. Played collegially at Notre Dame, and then Sam Johnson next to her. Those two have really been solid for one of the best defenses in the league. Presley getting it up to Edmonds. Edmonds, the second half substitution for the Pride. He's played a variety of roles as a leading scorer for Orlando last season. Drop back to a more defensive role for much of this season before we've seen Camilla take over that right back spot now for the second straight game. Bernardo. Gilliland couldn't quite keep it in. Asked her this week if she was going to try to get up into the attack a little more often after that beautiful left-handed goal of the week in the NWSL a week ago. And she's happy to play whatever role this team needs from her. Talked about all the work she put in in the offseason when she was basically told she had to do better or she might not have a spot on the team. Now she's been one of the unsung heroes for Tom Sermani along that back line. As she changed her diet, went vegan, lost 15 to 20 pounds, and says she feels much more mobile out there and able to retain her high work rate for 90 minutes as increased fitness. Good touch by Morgan. Camo, nice recovery though. Now just trying to hold off Catley. It's a one nothing game here in Bridgeview, Illinois. Toyota Park, the site of our NWSL game of the week on Lifetime. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf, Dallin Cuff alongside for this one. The last one for us before the international break. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, head out to Portland. Chicago Red Stars, if they can hang on, would move to the top of the table, overtake the North Carolina Courage, who do play later tonight in Kansas City. Press, a chance to break free again. Flag stays down. Press, one on one, takes the shot, and she's got two. Kristen Press was disappointed in her play in the first half, regardless that she scored a goal. But you get to see Kristen Press 
able to create something off a mistake by Ali Krieger, unable to clear it. Again, a nice little through ball to her. But look at her patience and poise. She has her head up the in single time. She's setting up Bledsoe. She sees where Bledsoe she's coming, is coming from, decides to increase her angle to her right foot, and then chips it up. And you see that huge smile relief, 2-0 for the Red Stars. All from the handiwork of Kristen Press being clutch and executing on big game chances. That was the eighth goal of the season for Kristen Press, who is quickly making her way into the Golden Boot conversation. Now tied with Marta with those eight goals. Sam Kerr leads the way with 10, Megan Rapino with nine. We had a great feature on Kristen Press in our pregame show earlier today, and she talked about the work she's done with mindfulness and meditation, even just trying to get her mind right and handle all of the pressure and expectations that come with being Kristen Press. And I think you'd say she looks like she's in the zone today. Absolutely, I think that is the one area that was the weakest point for her is the psychological aspect. The one that basically mediates her ability to express that technique that she has, which is superior under pressure. And we're getting to see that come out more often in NWSL. And because of those performances, you have to imagine she's becoming a more likely starter at that top center forward spot for the women's national team when she's able to execute like that. Press had the game-winning goal for the U.S. against Norway in those Scandinavian friendlies back in June. Marta loses it. Bernardo tries to take the shot. Lots of interchange from the Red Stars feeling very comfortable in their attacking dynamic funk group. Lots of movement. We can see Di Bernardo quick on the half turn and unleashes a very powerful shot from distance. Almost caught Bledsoe out a little bit out of position. But now it's a question for the Orlando Pride. Who's going to step up for them? You see Marta with her work rate trying to create something. Camilla needs to get involved in the game. Kennedy, these internationals that we're going to see in the Tournament of Nations have the skill and the technique and the tactical awareness to read the game to see where the pockets are. They need to step up for this team. It's a good possession put together here by Orlando. Kennedy got past Marta, but Catley was there. Morgan now turning to the outside. The cross headed away by Short. Camilla. And there is the whistle as she was tripped up late and a dangerous spot for a free kick in Orlando here. go Camilla with her right foot or Marta with her left and having both those options makes it a bit more difficult for Alyssa Nair the goalkeeper to figure out how to position her wall and doesn't make her so safe and secure of knowing exactly where the ball is going to go. The two Brazilians as you said standing over the ball for Orlando. Marta takes it quickly bounces out of bounds did Nair touch it. Our referee will say that she did, so it'll be a corner kick first to the second half for Orlando. Marta very demonstratively putting the ball down into the corner. And she could be lethal on these services. Nair coming out for it, grabs it out of the air. Kennedy may have been the intended target. She went down to the ground. Edmonds has shifted over to that left side. Initially, Tom Sermani talked about having her on the right, trying to exploit the flanks there, perhaps seeing something on the far side of the field for his second half substitution to try to make a difference. Edmonds on the ball now. Bogugu trying to get it to Alex Morgan, Casey Short 
was all over that ball. Edmonds could get to that ball, and two players are down. It's Catley who delivered it and then was on the ground for Orlando. Huerta for Chicago. Orlando's trying to switch the play. Catley does a little dive, and it looks like Huerta, a little bit of collision. Meanwhile, Marta has come to the side. We saw her slip earlier this half, so she's going to change the shoes. What an incredible history that Marta has in this game. It's hard to believe she's just 31 years old. You feel like you've been watching her perform and excel for such a long time. Five times she was named the World Player of the Year. Orlando, a player down as she's off on the sideline, has yet to return those new shoes. Press, big switch over to Camo. Naughton, Press was offside. Putting her hands in the air, saying, you can't go to me now. Actually, she was angry. She felt like she got body checked by Kennedy when she was trying to make a darting run across the front, which disrupted her run, which as a defender, the one way to disrupt a forward that's trying to run across you is just hit him. And that's exactly what happened in a clean way. And Press got a bit disturbed, and it was well done by Kennedy to try to prevent that run. Press moving up that goal scoring list. Leaders in the NWSL this season. First corner kick of the game for Chicago. Bent toward Bledsoe who punched it. up, looking for options, but instead hits it right to Camo. It is never an easy thing to come from two goals down in this league. That's what Tom Sermani's Orlando team is faced with, and to try to do it on the road in a place where Chicago has yet to lose a match this season. Yet with all of the varied weapons in this attack for Orlando, you certainly can't rest easy. If you're Chicago, I think you could hear that just talking to Rory Dames at halftime, not pleased at all. Knew his team still had a lot of work to do. Good work from Huerta. Little miscommunication, ball stays alive for Kasky, who quickly gives it up to Di Bernardo. Lauren Kasky. Rookie out of UCLA making her first start for Chicago today. So that ball will go over to the top to Nair. One thing Rory Dames has consistently done well with Chicago is develop young players. Chicago with more players acquired through the college draft than any other NWSL team, 25. Give you an idea, Portland, the way their team is built. Fewest, they have just 13. As Press sends a high ball in toward Hoy, and Presley keeps her calm. Shot from Kasky is on the ground to Bledsoe. 
But the one thing that Chicago has, it has someone in the front and it has someone in the back. You have someone that can take half chances like Kristen Press and turn them into something. And then any mistake you make, a rookie makes, you have Alyssa Nair behind you. So having those two pillars, it gives you time and it buys you growing pains that you're not gonna get punished for every single time. Because you're gonna have someone who's gonna put the game away for you when you shouldn't be winning it. And then you have Alyssa Nair that can, you know, cover you when you make a mistake. Well, interesting, Kate, we're hearing that Rory Dames is not on the bench for Chicago. Dallin, you've got more on that. Yes, Rory was actually ejected at halftime. We were just kind of sorting it out here for what the reason was. And we saw it when we went to the halftime interview with him. He was talking to the officials on the field. There were a little bit of an argument that he came over to us. And he was very measured and articulate in his response to me about what he was complaining about. Now, in the tunnels, we were told that the, uh, the official sent him out of the game. He's ejected for language and behavior. So regardless of how composed he was with us, they did not appreciate what he said on the field. So he has been ejected from the game. Wow, thanks, Dallin. So the Red Stars trying to hang on here with their head coach not able to be on the sideline for the second half. And there was a jersey tugging by Chioma Ubogagu against Kristen Press that we saw close to midfield, which was one of the plays certainly right before the end of the first half that had Rory Dames upset. He thought it should have been a yellow card. I've seen refs give yellow cards for that, and I've seen them not give it. But the, the difference was where it happened and the number of players in behind the ball of the fouling person. So Orlando fouled it, but they also had seven players behind the ball. I wouldn't have given a card for that because the ref hasn't given cards, especially the number of times Red Stars have pushed shoulder charges legally other players down from Orlando on the attack. I like that the ref is letting them play. So that was the play that Dallin mentioned he had talked to Rory about. Certainly there could have been other moments, other instances that had Rory Dames upset in the first half. You were just talking about those two pillars of experience and the veterans when you've got the back with a nair and a press up top. And certainly they become even more important now with the head coach in the locker room. There is Nair to come out and get the ball. As for Orlando, Kate, do you believe that this team, the group they have on the field, has what it takes to get back in this game? I do, but Marta has to get on the ball. She's playing a bit more central role. And Alex Nor Morgan needs to make a difference every time she gets the ball. Right now, she's getting beat to those simple outlet passes. Kristen Press in some space. Perhaps a hat trick for Press. Has it on her left foot side netting. Allie Krieger is being left all along with Camilla. The right back now pushing up in the attack means there's acres of space to operate outside the wing backs. Allie Krieger does a good job of forcing her wide press with a reduced angle, trying to create something out of a very little window. Exciting to watch, but there wasn't much angle to slip that past that so. Here's Morgan. Alex Morgan with her first NWSL goal of the season last week. Trying to get it to Marta. Ertz there to help defensively. Short for Chicago players as Marta goes down to the ground. We wondered how this revamped Chicago back line would do, especially in the early going when Orlando seemed to have their way and Chicago seemed out of sorts. But you talked about the frustrations of both Alex Morgan and Marta up the middle. Casey Short and Katie not been tough. Also, Chicago has it figured out in the beginning. Sofia Huerta didn't quite know how to position herself defensively. As expected, she hasn't played there that often at wide right midfield, but she figured it out. Her positioning is much better. And now the attack for Orlando is not going down that side. And Marta isn't finding the space because of the adjustments Chicago has made. Callie. Trying to 
to get around Huerta. Gets the ball through. Short is there. She seems to be there every time a ball is sent into the box by Orlando. who's been sick this week. Came in at the start of the second half for Chicago. Skaski passes out of bounds. Sabia Huerta, we mentioned earlier, will be called into training camp with the U.S. national team. Has appeared for the Mexican national team, but U.S. soccer is appealing on her behalf to try to get her association changed. Do you see a future with Sabia Huerta with the U.S. Cape? She has so many upsides and potential. Her strength and her ability to serve from the wing. And the width is one area that head coach Jill Ellis wants to develop and be a bit more versatile. Have players that can play up top, but also can they cover defensively? And with the communications between head coach the NWSL and the U.S. Women's National Team coaches, those talks are like, hey, can we try this player here? And can we work on that? And right now, Sofia Huerta is benefiting from that relationship between those two coaches, giving her an opportunity to grow into a new position when she's traditionally been a left winger for the Chicago Red Stars. Yeah, Rory Dames, I was talking to him about that yesterday, and he said he has played Huerta out wide before. Certainly, he feels like their best pairing is Huerta up top with press, but he said he realizes that that could be her future with the U.S. national team. And a perfect example of just what you're talking about, giving her a chance to work out there on that part of her game. Did well to keep possession that time, and then a foul on Hoy by Presley. Both players going into it. And just getting too much of the body on Huerta, excuse me, on Hoy. Presley going in too hard, doesn't ever stop her momentum. Be smart for the Red Stars just to hold on to the ball, pass a little bit before going long. Press lining it up, looking to set up Hoy. She'll try it again. Marta comes back to clear and find a Bogagu on the far side of the field. <laughs> Chicago Red Stars just one loss in their last 11. They seem to be finding their form playing very well, good balanced team, as we've talked about throughout our broadcast. Strong defense, it's tough to break down. Orlando is much possession as they had early on, just could not get through that defense. And that attack with Kristen Press, which has been so lethal anytime they've had the opportunity today. Kill for Morgan. Try to get a Bogagu. Marta. Kennedy. Bogagu tried to lay it off for Edmonds. It's just too tight in there. It's too many little tricky little one-touch dinks instead of using the width. 
and someone on that team needs to take responsibility and create the chance themselves. Maybe if I'm Red Stars, I'm just going to expect they're going to try to pass it and try to wall pass me or slip a ball in behind. That may work, but mix it up a little bit. Turn when you get the ball. Try to face up and then dish it out wide and then find a new angle to get open to an attack off a cross. It's too tight in there right now. Really quite a different feel to this match than the first time these two teams met this season. As Kasky gets to the ball, we'll cut it in now, send it across. That ball will go out for a corner. Chicago did win that first game one to nothing, but a little bit against the run of play. Penalty kick from Press was the difference back on July 1st in Orlando in the 68th minute. But in that match, you talk about finding the width for Orlando. The Pride had 34 crosses in that match. Just weren't ever able to connect and find the back of the net to just three for Chicago. Casey Short, the target that time. Ubogogu gets it. Gets in a little bit of trouble. Now Morgan. Edmonds just putting her head down, trying to catch up to the ball. You just get the feeling the Chicago team is saying, OK, you need to figure something else out because they've defended well everything that Orlando's thrown at them so far in this match. Chicago looking very confident. Two nothing lead on their home field where they have yet to lose this season. Catley will not get the ball back. It'll be a Chicago throw. Where it's a good job defensively. Just feel the pace, the feel, everything in this game has really gotten bogged down a little bit here as we head into the 75th minute. Our second hydration break approaching any moment now. The heat is definitely a factor, and it would be wonderful if Catley could get end line. If someone from Orlando could get end line, stretch the Red Stars out that back line, it's so compact and so narrow, that might be the bit of difference needed to get an opportunity on goal. Hard foul from Marta there, who was just step for step with Gilliland, trying to regain the ball. And then she'll pick up the yellow after the play. Tough challenge from the Brazilian. Marta doing the defensive work, and Gilliland trying to exceed the space. Marta does a little clip on her heels, knows it, puts her hands up, embrace it. No fighting from her. And this is our second hydration break coming up. Chicago Red Stars leading it two to nothing. The Orlando Pride trailing the Chicago Red Stars two to nothing. A couple of changes for the Pride coming on. Monica and Rachel Hill. We'll see if they can make a difference in this Orlando attack that is trailing thanks to two goals from Kristen Press. If she gets one more, it would be history for Chicago. The first hat trick in Red Stars history. Camilla gets it up to Hill, who just came into the match. Tom Sermani thought about starting her. She gets it to Kennedy. 
whose shot is wide. Hill making an immediate impact, incredible work rate, and she is threading that needle of staying onside. She sees the entire line, a beautiful ball from Camilla. Hill's touch, unfortunately, takes her away from the area she wants to attack, but does a good thing, cuts it back, and Candy not able to get the correct timing to put a good strike on the ball to test an air. But an infusion of pace, energy, and desire is much needed for this Orlando team. It's just a matter how it all gels with the skill and the technique of Camilla and Marta. Well, we told you that Rory Dames was ejected after the first half. Dallin, you've got more on how the bench is being managed in his absence. Yes, thanks, Jen. I'll come to that in a second. I did confirm during the hydration break with the referee, Farhad Dako, that everything that was on the field was the issue. Right at the end of half, his, his behavior on the field was the issue. There was nothing happened up in the tunnel. He was notified in the tunnel that he would be dismissed from the game. Now, as far as who's manning the sideline, it's a triumvirate of coaches, really. Christian Labor and Angelo DiBernardo are two assistant coaches, as well as Jordy King, the goalkeeper coach. All three of them have been up and active on the touchline since about the 50th minute, and we're, we're just doing that in the hydration break, all very communicative with the team. Thanks, Dallin. Of course, if you recognize one of those names, Angelo DiBernardo was a U.S. men's national team player back in his day, but he's also now more known as the dad of Vanessa DiBernardo. Corner kick chance here for Orlando, which has come out of this hydration break with a little more life. Ball punched away as Nair is brought down. Looked to be some additional contact after the punch, but she gets back to her feet. Camilla sending it back in, and Kennedy can't get there. Edmonds calmly has it. Presley, see that left foot that could be so lethal. Being able to come out on crosses in traffic and not be distracted by onrushing attackers. And you can see Kennedy both going up. And there puts her left arm up, protects her body, and then punches it out of danger. Kennedy being courageous, going for it as well. It's a good challenge. Love the referee did not call a foul on either side. You don't think? I your goalie. I think the goalkeeper was pulled down. You could see her body language. Kennedy on her way down pulled. It looked like she pulled her down. If you're in midair, how do you pull? Like how? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Come on, Kate. I high five you before. Now we're gonna take each other out in the booth. From that angle, I would like to see it again. From that angle, I don't think so. I think Kennedy inadvertently pulled her down, but I also think Anair was falling down because of her momentum. That excellent save by Nair was beautiful textbook. There also keeping calm no matter what happened in there. Got herself back to her feet. Hill putting some pressure on here. She has a lot of speed, and Tom Sermani has talked about her work rate and the pressure she can put high. Here's another look. Right there. That was not intentional. Arm on the shoulder. Look, her arm was up on the shoulder above it to begin with. She's coming down. She's not going to suddenly cut it off, chew it off, and put it back to her body. That alligator. Like. <laughs> I always defer to the expert beside me, but I, I do. Uh, I understand take where you're up coming the keeper from. there. Yeah. I understand. It could have gone either way, but I'm glad the referee did not call it. <laughs> yeah. Rory Dames, who's still out there, might <laughs> disagree. Bernardo to press. Huerta quickly giving her an outlet on the right side. The cross was a bit deflected. It's out of the reach of Bledsoe. Just nobody else pouncing on the ball for Chicago. Huerta's service from a wide position has been so good today. Has the assist with the first goal finding press in behind the back line and there. You see so many times that ball is hit short or doesn't have any texture on it. That ball was whipped in with a little bit of bent away from Bledsoe, away, trying to find Kasky on the far side. It's a great skill set she'll bring to the tournament of nations. Chicago go to its bench, bring in Morgan Profit. So we just need 
fifth appearance of the season for the rookie out of Marquette. She'll take the place of Kasky. It's a big, tall player, able to win those aerial challenges, 50-50 balls, sit more centrally. Profit, 5'10", 22 years old. Made her debut in the home opener for the Red Stars against Kansas City. Hasn't seen many minutes this season yet. Hill has tripped herself up a little bit. Loses it to Press. Kristen Press, two goals, the difference in this game. She's just going to keep running with the ball. Eventually, Marta comes to take it away. Morgan waiting for it. Alex Morgan. She had to her NWSL account. Rifles a shot. There, deflects it out. It'll be a corner. Alex Morgan, this is the first time we've seen her actually take somebody on and attempt to go towards goal with it. Cuts it back to her left foot, not much of an angle, but have to thread it so nearly near post. Listen there, had it covered. There's the service, Nair punching! It got beyond her and just skidded over that crossbar. Presley, the target, in that near post, just looking to do a little bit of a flick. Excellent service. Alyssa Nair does just enough. Actually, Alyssa Nair doesn't get a touch on the ball, just a little bit high. But Presley had that converted, would have been her second goal in two consecutive games. That was the eighth corner kick for Orlando in this match. They had six in the first half. Haven't been able to generate as many corners in the second half. Chicago has done an equal job to that. Each team with two in the second half. Monica has stepped into that back line. Camilla pushed up higher. Into the midfield now for Orlando. Hill. Looking for Morgan. Kate, what do you take away from this? If you're this Orlando Pride team that was unbeaten their last three matches on the road, maybe felt like they were starting to get some things to come together, especially with Alex Morgan, her third straight start. Where do you think they go from here? I think they try to decide what's the best position of Marta, but they're also playing as one of the best defenses in the league. So as much as they were on a high and playing well on the road, they're also playing against arguably the best team in the, league, in the NWSL. So the question is, what can they take away from it? One, I think Camilla needs to be higher up on the field. I think she needs to be contributing in the midfield, helping the attack. Two, Alex Morgan needs to turn with the ball a bit more. Too many players are too far away from each other and allow Marta to pull a little bit higher, but essentially because she is so good at creating. If they can figure out those spaces in that midfield and attacking third, and not and be a bit more patient on the attack. They're going to be more unpredictable, and they'll be able to break down more defenses and unlock them easier moving forward. There's certainly no question about their amount of talent and firepower that they have in their attack. If you're right, they could just get those pieces put in the right spots and maybe be a little, as you said, less predictable. But they're still figuring it out. Marta didn't come until two months after the season has started. Alex Morgan is just coming back healthy, regaining her fitness and her strength and her confidence. So this might be a team that makes a surge to the playoffs a little bit later. They're hoping it was starting earlier, but they're going against a tough side. They could 
learn a lot from this game moving forward. Both teams get a break with the international break next week, but then they get to face off yet again, August 5th. They will meet up in Orlando, third meeting of the season. Touch back, DiBernardo tries to clear it away. Stoppage time added on, a minimum of four minutes. What has been an impressive performance by the Red Stars here today. One that if this scoreline stands would see them post their sixth shutout of the season, their sixth win of the season at home, and put them in first place in the NWSL heading into the break, although North Carolina, the current team on the top of the table to play later tonight at Kansas City. Bledsoe bested twice by Kristen Press today. Also came up a couple of big saves. Though she might have handed off the save of the week honors this week to Alyssa Nair for that point blank stop that Nair had in the first half on a header by Alex Morgan. You said it earlier, the Red Stars had three players playing in the same position they played the last game. In order to make a playoff run, you need to have depth, which they have. See what this ball does as it's headed back toward the goal. Another chance for Orlando, and Kennedy scores. Some life, perhaps, for the pride. The ball from a wide, long position, a little flick on from Hill back to Lana Kennedy that started it again. She was one able to flick that on, but I love how Hill hit it back, realized the angle was barely there, and sent it central where the anger was greater for someone to run onto. And Kennedy with her third goal in the season. But getting in behind this Chicago back line through a flick service is what, what it took. So far, Orlando hasn't been able to get in behind that often or capitalize on it. And that time they did. Remember that Chicago led Sky Blue FC on the road in their last match, 2-0 before Sky Blue came back and wound up tying that game in stoppage time thanks to Sam Kerr's goal. Which came from a service similar in a similar spot that that service came from. That goal snapping the shutout in this series historically. As we mentioned earlier, the first three times these teams met was one nothing wins for the Red Stars. Won't be a shutout today. Will it be three points for Chris and Press? Fancy little ball to Huerta. DiBernardo. Chicago talked about moving on. They were frustrated after not picking up the full three points last week in that road match in New Jersey. They moved on, tried to stay confident. Now trying to close this one out. Rachel Hill picking up her first NWSL assist on that goal by Kennedy.
Bledsoe will come out to get this ball from Profit. It's going to be a foul against Kennedy at Orlando. So free kick coming for Chicago, and you can bet they'll take their time on this one. Kennedy cutting the deficit in half for the Pride in stoppage time. Imagine a little more time was added on to those four minutes, but I see our referee raising his hand, and that will do it. The Chicago Red Stars don't get the shutout, Kate, but they do get the win, the three points and move it on up to the top of the table in the NWSL. And they also have confidence in their bench, having to go to it and shift the lineup around due to sickness from Julie Ertz, who came in the second half. And then Casey Short comes in, Gilliland goes to, to left back instead of right. So those little adjustments, this is the type of victory that not only builds confidence, but builds character. Sam Johnson able to rest after she had to come out of the last match. Rory Dame saying, I probably could have played her then, maybe I could have played her today, but with the break coming up, wanted to get her fully healthy. And the Red Star was able to give their fans yet another win here at Toyota Park. 6-0-2 this season. They only have one home loss since the beginning of last season here at Toyota Park. That's the best home record in the NWSL. Julie Ertz feeling well enough now to catch up with our down cup. Thanks, Jen. Julie, you came on at halftime. The first half, Orlando had a lot of the ball. When you were watching the game, what were you seeing them and being able to possess the game and kind of dominate it early on? Yeah, I thought their movement's really good. Obviously, March is a very talented player as well, with them having Alex from the last game. I know that when we played them, she came in um, a little bit later in the game, but they do really good movement off each other, so it really kind of spaces out the, the uh, space that's in between kind of the midfield and the defensive line, and that was really hurting us. And um, obviously, March is very good on a ball faced up, so that was a big thing in the second half that we didn't want it to happen, obviously, because of how good she is. But um, great finishes. Um, I know I think this is Kasky's first start, and it's we take a lot of pride in being able to play all of our players. So for her to come in and get minutes in and have a good performance is huge for us. What was your goal coming in at halftime? What was your marching orders, if you will? Um, I think really defensively, like the defensive side of things. I knew that I probably wouldn't get the ball as much as I know that um, they kind of press my area, especially in the six area as well. So, you know, I really just wanted to have defensive presence. You know, I, I um, couldn't do the full 90 um, for this game, but I feel like coming in, I really wanted to have a voice out there. I think um, I can see things defensively from the first half that needed to be worked on. So that was my main goal. With Rory being dismissed at halftime as one of the leaders, how much does that change your role when you got on the field? You know what? I think Rory, especially this year now that we're older, um, an older team, still young, but you know, a lot of us have been together for four years. He, even in practice, you know, he really kind of puts a lot of it on us, especially, you know, um, I think me and Press has a, have, a, have a bigger role this year than maybe did in the past year. So, you know, we, it, it really didn't make that much of a difference in the sense that even at practice, he really forces us to kind of take initiative to um, hold ourselves to a higher standard. So that's kind of, um, you know, it's actually a good thing for us. I think, you know, if it was to happen in the semis or something, we need to be seeing everything. So, you know, we're a little bit, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. So, you know, he's a great coach. So luckily he's really trained us well in case that happened. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great to hear from Julie Ertz, feeling better. And do you think, Kate, she did make a difference when she came in in the second half? She did because she sat in behind, in in front of that back line, able to kind of provide that shield that a defensive center midfield does. But it also helps that the back line wasn't starting so high and then dropping and creating those huge gaps in the first half. And, of course, it helps when you have a goal score. Two goals for Kristen Press. She's with Dallin. Thanks, Jen. Kristen, you definitely sucked it up today. It's hot out here. I know it was tough on everybody physically, especially in the beginning of that game. Orlando was bossing the game. You didn't get many chances, but you took your two and you finished. How tough is that to only take the chances you're given? Yeah, I think Orlando had the, the better of possession today and actually last time we played them, but I think it's important for us. Over the course of the season, you have to win in all types of circumstance, and sometimes you have to grind it out, defend really hard, and then put away your chances, and that's what we did today. Defensively in the second half, you guys really seemed to clamp down. They got a late goal, but you really kind of controlled them in the second half. What was the difference in your mind? I think after last week giving up a 2-0 lead, I think it like stuck with us when we had that 2-0 lead again that we just can't do it. It sucks that we gave up the goal at the end because I think that for this group it's really important that we have the confidence to end games when we're ahead. Um, and that's something that we're going to have to grow into as the season continues. You talked about in the feature we ran pregame about you never being satisfied and kind of always looking to push yourself further. You scored that goal and you came to Roy. 
said, I'm struggling. What, can you give me any advice for me? What were you looking for? Though? What were you struggling with? I think the first quarter of the game, my touch was just off. It was brutally hot. I have a little bit of pain in my foot, and I was just like, wow, I'm really off. Um, and so I wasn't doing some of the dropping into the midfield and setting plays I normally did. And you know what he said? He said, you got a goal, ride the momentum, stay high, poach. And that's what I was able to do. And I think with that confidence and momentum, I actually ended up being able to drop in lower and help my team set play in the second half.